And again, uh, lovely and nice to see all of you again. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, um, as usual, we will start with a short mindful breathing exercise, watching our breath mindfully to bring our mind in moment present. And we can try to generate good intention for being here. We can try to think and feel. By us coming here together, give our precious time, energy, resources to listen. And to engage in discussions, if there's any need to be discussion, reflection, contemplations. May all these activities, actions become cause and conditions to encourage us to inspire us to go to foot those practices into our everyday life as much as possible. To integrate them. so that we can improve, improve and increase our loving kindness, compassion, both the mind, wisdom, patience, practice of discipline in our practice. and so forth. Helping increase and improve those inner positive qualities so that we can find more calmness, more peacefulness more inner joy, happiness in our life, but also
both or that we can be more help, more benefit to others. In short, may it become cause and condition to actualize and fully develop all the inner spiritual experience or realizations. So we can be much more benefit and help to others in oneself. And to achieve our highest potential, fully awakened state. As soon as possible, for the greatest benefit and help of each and every sentient being. May we always be help and benefit to others through body, speech, and mind, directly, indirectly, in whatever way we can. And at least may we never intentionally hurt and harm, hurt and harm others. Okay. Sangi chodanto ki sonam la chanchu bato dhani kya so che Dagi ji so ki de sonam ki Dola penche sangi dhokha Sangi chodanto ki sonam la chanchu bato dhani Dagi so ki de sonam ki Dola penche sangi dhokha I go for refuge until I'm enlightened to the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Supremist family. By the merit I create a vision of the Dharma, may I become a Buddha in order to benefit all sentient beings. <clears throat> so, um, we have been following this um, Lama Adisha's very um, famous and well-known um, <clears throat> text. Oh. And uh, within that, we are on sections on the practice of um, the Bodhisattvas, or the, the great scope, in terms of three scope. And within that, you know, um, we just completed uh, on the where he explained about uh, generating the aspiring bodhicitta mind and having cultivated the aspiring bodhicitta mind and trying in order to stabilize it, maintain it, and increase it. Then um, taking the aspiring bodhicitta vows, precepts, and having uh, taking the bodhisattvas. Um, Aspiring bow or precept, and then how to keep them, um, preserve them, uh, observe them without um, broking them, um, without losing them uh, in this and in future life by keeping those precepts. So I think we kind of finish up to there. And then we are on on the um, engaging both of us vows. The engaging bodhicitta and engage, um, engaging both of us vows. And so 
again, in terms of that, um, again, it's hard to say because it, it doesn't have the numbers. Um, I can't even see the page number. Yeah. Anyway, I think whatever page number it is, um, where it says only those who continuously maintain No, I think before that, I think. Yeshla, are we on page five? Um, is it the last verse on page five or the understand that a good spiritual teacher? I think we finished that one. Um, did you know we finished, we should generate Inspirational both Cheda and constantly increase it through great expression. You should fully uphold your precept as instructed. And we discussed that, you know, how to uphold the precept through the practice, um, you know. Um, um, through the four practices to uphold in this lab and then engaging into abandoning the four negative dharma and engaging four positive dharma in order to uphold in the future so that you may recollect this in others lifetime as well. So I think that's what we, we finish up to that. So then without the actual vows or engage bodhicitta. So talk about the uh, aspiring or wishing bodhicitta. And, but without the actual vows or engaged bodhicitta, your perfect inspirations, that bodhicitta will not develop further, you know. And if your aspiring bodhicitta does not develop further, you know, if it doesn't increase and develop further, then um, mm, further, you know, then you will not be able to achieve fully enlightenment, you know. You will not be able to achieve fully enlightenment. Also, you know, um, yeah. So you will not be able to progress beyond the first path, you know, beyond the first path and you will not be able to achieve the fully enlightenment. And without achieving the fully enlightenment, then we will not be able to be greatest benefit to all sentient beings. We can be some benefit, but our benefit will be very um, small and limited, um, and only for very few individuals. But if we can achieve fully enlightenment, then we can be greatest benefit to each and every sentient beings. We can fulfill our greatest um, purpose and we can fulfill the greatest purpose of all sentient beings. And therefore, you know, with the wish to develop perfect enlightenment, so therefore one should cultivate the wish to develop that perfect enlightenment, the supreme enlightenment. And in order to develop, in order to actualize that um, and achieve that supreme in uh, enlightenment, then make effort to take the vows in full, you know, then we should put effort to take the engaging both of the vows, you know, mm -hmm. fully, you know, and so so that is the, the that is the advice, you know, that we should try to put the effort um, to take the precept or the engaging both of the vows, so that we can make further development in our spiding bodhicitta mind. And through that, then we can make progress on our spiritual path and journey. And so that we can achieve fully enlightenment. So we can be greatest benefit to everyone, including oneself. And so that, um, so that is the, the instructions, the encouragement, um, 
advice um, to take the the both of the vows, the precepts, the vows, and to keep them uh, because that is very crucial, very important. Mm. And again, as according to many of the commentaries, as and also his holiness, you know, um, maintain, maintain, you know, when you take the both of vows, you know, on the basis of inspiring bodhicitta mind, and then your bodhicitta become engaged in bodhicitta, you know, and once you become your bodhicitta become engaged in bodhicitta, you know, um, and from that on, your practice, whatever practice you do, become both sort of us practice, whatever practice such as generosity become the practice of uh, the perfection of generosity. Whatever practice of moral discipline you do, it become practice of, you know, perfection of um, moral discipline and so forth. And so, <clears throat> and again, I think as I mentioned before, um, in terms of the spiraling both, um, no, uh, engaging both to the mind. Um, you know, there are mm, 18 rule vows, you know. And sometimes when we read them, you know, again, if sometimes we might feel we might not be able to keep them. But as I mentioned before, the whole purpose of taking the boat to the mind is to support and help us. We might not be perfect from the very beginning after we take the precepts. That is the whole purpose of taking vows and precepts. If you are perfect, you are able to keep it perfectly, then we don't need to take the vows. There's no need of precepts. There's no need of vows. As I mentioned before, you know, for the Buddhas and those who are perfect, they don't, they don't need the precepts and the vows. And for those who are not perfect and so improve, to become better, to improve ourselves. That's the way we take the vows and precept. And from the very beginning, we will not be perfect and we will not be able to keep them perfectly. Even the great Adisha, like himself, it is said, you know, he, even such masters, sometimes he see, you know, falling of the, some of the, those vows. But when he see, we notice that and he try to, do the purification and retake it. And through that, you know, you improve slowly, slowly and get better and better with the time. Um, so that is, that is, um, we have to understand that. Otherwise, you know, we might not be able to make any commitment, any uh, or not be able to take any kind of precept and vows. You are waiting to take it until we feel confident that we can be perfect, we, might, we will be able to keep them perfectly. By the time you reach that point, then you are already enlightened and then you don't need it. You know, um, so therefore we have to understand it is a tools, the vows, are a tool to protect and to support help in our practice to become better, you know, to help us to to help us to um, stop or avoid, you know, harming others. Uh, it help us to and support us to develop and increase our loving kindness, compassion, bodhicitta mind, and both of us actions. And so that is, mm. so I just wanted to make that kind of, um, that um, little bit clarity on that. Uh, and um, mm.
So then next, you know, um, who is, who is um, uh, you know, what kind of persons or sentient beings can take such both of vows, you know, such both of vows, you know. Um, and so in that, only those who continuously maintain one of the seven types of individual liberation vows or other vows will have the fortune for both sort of vows, no one else. So here he said, those who have taken any of the seven types of the individual liberation vows, you know, so those seven uh, type of the individual liberation vows or precepts are, you know, that they are five lay vows, you know, for male and females. We call Ubasaka and Ubasiki, you know, Ubasiki for the lay practitioner who have taken those vows, Ubasaka for those um, practitioners, lay practitioner who have taken the lay, those lay vows, you know, so Ubasaka, Ubasiki, and then, you know, in term of the novice, there's monks and nuns, they are novice vows, you know, again, for the monks and nuns, you know, male and female. Then for the nuns, there is intermediate vows, you know, we call gelogma, uh, intermediate vows. And then um, there's viction in the full ordination vow for the both monks and nuns. And so those are the seven, okay? Those are the seven um, vows, and those are the uh, seven those the seven um, type of individual liberation vows, and uh, you know. So, if any if anyone has taken any of those vows and maintain it, you know, keep it, preserve it, then they become the you know ready and ripen and fortune fortune to be able to receive the, the vows of the vows. Here is a vows or other vows. Other vows here means, you know, like, you know, such as, you know, refuge vows. When you take refuge vows and then when you make a commitment and vow precept to live your life according to the 10 virtuous action by avoiding 10 non-virtuous action and by engaging 10 virtuous actions. So that that is the other vows, you know, similar that you avoid any action through body, speech, and mind to hurt and harm others. And um, keeping your body, speech, and mind to be help and benefit to others. So any of, uh, any of those vows then Forging for the both of vows, you know. So, in according to some of the, yeah. So, yeah. Um, so, even if you do not have those, any of the seven type of the vows, but if you have that up the vows, uh, and also you can receive the, um, you can receive the, the both of vows, you know. And of course, if you can receive any of those seven vows, then it is excellent, it's even better, it's even better. So you have that. The reason is, you know, the bolsters of vows, we take those bolsters of vows to be help and benefit to other sentient beings, okay? To practice the bolsters of path. To practice the both sort of path is to be benefit and help to other sentient beings. And in order to, before you can be help and benefit to other sentient beings, you must have a foundation where at least, at least you don't hurt and harm others intentionally. You know? And so that is the, these vows, you know, the seven types of vows and the other vows are a, mainly a vows to avoid, a vows to avoid harming and hurting others intentionally through body, speech, and mind. 
you know. First, if you have that foundation vows, you stop hurting and harming other intentionally. Then next, not only you stop and avoid hurting and harming others intentionally, now you intentionally try to be help and benefit to others. And, you, and therefore that purpose, then you take the both of vows. And so therefore that is why those other vows are excellent foundations for the both of vows, you know. And that being the case, you know, traditionally, when the Bolsador's vows are given, part of that ceremony, before the Bolsador's vows, there is a tradition of giving of refuse and lay vows as part of the ceremony, you know. You know, so, um, and so, so that is why, okay. So then among those seven types of the vows, you know, among those seven types of the vows, um, individual liberation vows, which are the foundation precepts of vows or the both of vows, you know, among them are there some who are more superior than others, you know, and so then next mention about that. According to the Tathagata explanations, you know, so the Buddha's explanations, Tathagata or Buddha, you know, explanation of seven classes of the vows of individual liberation that I just mentioned, you know, um, glorious pure contact, celibacy is said to be the supreme and take therefore the vow of full ordination. So among them, you know, um, Buddha explained among all these vows, then, you know, the celibacy vow of full ordinations is supposed to be the most supreme you know, then the novice vows, then the Ubanisha, uh, Ubasaka vows, you know, so in terms of that, you know, and because, you know, each vows has more commitments, you know, Ubasaka vows, the lay vows have five, and the novice vows, they are more, you know, they are more commitment, more vows, commitment they make, and the full ordination, then there is even more commitment, more vows. And if you have made more commitment, more taking more vows, and if you can lead to those more vows, you know, you stop harming others more. And you, uh, through those support the vows, you engage in more virtues and less non-virtues. If you, if you take and if you are able to keep them, you know, and so, and so therefore, on the basis of that, then, then you know, the, the full ordination vows is the, the, the more superior or supreme among those vows. And uh, in one of the tantric teaching by Buddha himself, also he talked about, you know, even for the Tantric practitioners, you know, um, having the foundations of the full ordination vows is the supreme. Um, so, so I think according to that, that is where this explanation comes. Um, so now next is, mm, How to take the both of vows and from where we take the both of vows, you know. Um, from whom we take the both of vows, you know. And then after that, and how to take it, the ritual or the ceremony to take it. So, uh, so now having explained who can take the both of vows, now explaining from whom should we take the double of vows. You know, from whom we should take the verse about. So, according to the rituals or ceremony described in the discipline chapter of the Bolsado label. So, this particular text, the Bolsado label of Bhumi, is by Asanga, one of the earlier great Indian masters, you know. And um, 
among the earlier Indian masters, especially in Mayana traditions after the Buddha, most true crucial master is Nagarjuna and Adisha. No, uh, Nagarjuna and Asanga. You know, Nagarjuna for the wisdom lineage and Asanga for the method lineage. Uh, the method is the, the practice of loving kindness, compassion, bodhicitta, the practice of general knowledge, all, all other bodhs of practice that is not part of the wisdom, you know. So, so Asanga is kind of um, after the Buddhas, then among the Mayana, he is most um, influential and mostly highly regarded. And so in his uh, particular text called Bodhisattva Level or Bodhisattva Bhumi, there are many chapters, and in one of those chapters, he's, he's, he talked about the, the, you know, the discipline or the, the, the vows, the precept of the Bodhisattvas. So in that chapter, then uh, he explained, you know, where the person from whom the, you should receive um, the, the both of the vow precept is that you should take the vows from a good, authentic, qualified spiritual teacher, you know. So you, you can't take from anyone. So here he is saying, you know, it's not like since because you want, then whoever offer it, you take it or from wherever it says, you know, it, you have to take from someone who is, you know, good heart, you know, or noble heart, you know, good and authentic qualified spiritual teachers who has the, all the qualifications, um, you know, to do that. Mm. And so who, if we have to take on good and authentic Qualify spiritual teachers, how do we know uh, what kind of authentic, what kind of, you know, um, qualified, what are the qualifications, you know? And so then that next he describes what are those qualifications for to look in that teacher from whom you try to um, receive or take the vows. Understand that good spiritual teachers, you know, so the good spiritual qualified authentic teachers here from whom you can receive the vows is that one is skilled in the vows ritual, the ceremony, you know, um, in terms of, you know, how to give or how to, um, um, yeah, how to give the, the, the both of the vows correctly unmistakably, who is skilled in that, you know, and someone who, who, who is skilled in when, you know, when there is a kind of um, damage to the vows, you know, how to, how to restore it, you know, and, and how to restore it, and who is skilled in explaining how to restore them, you know, and you were able to keep it, you know, purely, you know, how to improve it, how to increase and get make better and to be able to explain again how to do that, you know, skillfully and who is expert in that. And so that is skill in the vow to ritual, you know, who is skilled and expert in, you know, explaining all these different um, and leading the vows through that, you know, so someone who is skilled that, who lives by the vows and possess, and someone who has taken the vows themselves, you know, not from someone who does not have the vows, but someone who have taken the vows themselves and who possess the vows themselves, and not only who have taken the vows, but who is able to keep those vows you know, who have been able to keep those vows, live those vows, you know, and so um, not like you take it and then totally broken, all of them broken, but, you know, someone who has taken it and who possess that vow and who try to keep it, 
could have been able to keep it, could be able to um, live it. And patience, another qualities is, you know, being patient with the disciples, with the students, you know, um, not giving up easily, you know, when the students, uh, you know, or the disciple, uh, you know, when they are, um, when they, when they, when they don't, sometimes they maybe they are not disciplined enough. Sometimes maybe, you know, um, they, are, they get too distracted. Sometimes they don't have, you know, put effort and so forth, you know, or sometimes they are unable to understand, even when someone try to explain and lead them with many times. So sometimes, you know, someone could lose patience and give up. And so here he's saying someone who doesn't give up easily, you know, even with all of that, but someone who has patience, you know. Um, and especially also patience when, he, when someone is giving you the vows and then guiding and guiding the students in that having the patience. And not only patience, compassion to bestow it, having the compassion and patient to bestow the vow, as well as compassion to the uh, the students, you know. Mm. So, if that teachers have those qualities, you know, skill in the vow ceremonial rituals, who have taken the vows themselves, who live the vows, and then who have who has patience and compassion, then such teacher is authentic, qualified from whom one, one can receive the vows. Okay? So, mm. and so next one, so we have spoke about who, who can receive it and from whom we should receive it. And now, you know, how to receive it, the actual ritual or ceremony itself for taking the vows. Um, again, you know, I think uh, uh, he goes so details in, you know, that. And because it is very um, important factors, you know, those both of vows are very, important practice or factor for someone who's trying to be on both of the path, someone who is trying to engage in both of the path, someone who's trying to follow the Mahayana or both of the path, you know, and so for that, those become crucial and important. So that is why he go very details. Mm. And then in terms of the rituals, there are two rituals, two different rituals or the ceremony. And according to one ceremony, there is the teacher and, and the, according to the other ceremony that one can take vows or receive the vows without the teachers. And so, uh, you know, and so, so there. Mm. In terms of having the teachers from whom you can receive, that is the best, you know, that is the best. If you can find, if someone can find, you know, good, authentic, qualified teacher from whom you can receive, that is the best and that one should try to find such teacher if one can find, you know, and that is again, as according to the, the Asangas, um, both sort of a boomy of the levels, you know, um, in that he explained very clearly in that, you know, and according to that, according to following that particular teachings, you know, then, um, you know, to receive the vows, 
then you know there is a preparation, the actual ceremony at the, uh, at the conclusions, you know, like many other ceremonies, you know. And at the, at the very beginning of the um, preparation, then they are, you know, um, requesting, cultivating a um, joyful state, joyful mind to, to receive that vows, you know. Then engaging in the um, accumulating of the uh, merit, you know, uh, and then inspiring, you know, encouraging, inspiring to for the vows, and then generating a, a good intention, you know, um, positive, good, compassionate, bodhicitta motivations, you know, and then you know. Um, asking um, obstacles, you know, like such as, you know, are you being forced to take the vows or not? And, or are you taking from your from yourself, not being forced by someone else for, for one example? So there are a few um, questions and answers like that to make sure that someone is not forcing them to do that, you know? And then at the end, you know, um, summarizing the precepts. So there are seven kind of preparations and then the actual ceremony, you know, is that the teachers, you know, um, explain and as well as recite the, that ceremony three times, you know, and after repeating after the teachers three times, you know, then you receive at the third time of course, the teacher will explain and also you visualize and you imagine, and then that is how you receive that the actual ceremony. And then, you know, um, conclusion, then there are, uh, you know, like again, other five, you know, um, letting you know that you now you have received that vow, you know, um, and then explaining the benefit of, you know, uh, taking the vows and having the, under the care of the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, you know. And then having, think, um, explaining, the teacher explain, you know, that having taken the Bodhisattva vows, you know, you don't try to explain to everyone, you know, I've taken Bodhisattva vows or being prideful of that, but you just keep, you know, practice yourself and just keep to yourself uh, instead of showing up, you know. And then, you know, um, again, um, summarizing the preset um, in the short, and then, you know, there is the Thanksgiving offerings. So those are the five kind of conclusions. So that is, you know, when you follow extensive, when you follow an extensive ceremony, according to the way uh, it is explained by Asanka in that his particular um, both of the Bumi, okay? So that is one way you know, um, um, but of course the ceremony can, this is the extensive, but sometimes the ceremony can be much more shorter, you know, so it depends on the teachers, you know, and the time, you know, even with His Holiness, you know, sometimes he, he follow this, uh, this extensive um, ceremony that could take a couple of hours, you know, and more time he will do kind of more shorter ceremony, you know. And sometimes when, when there's no time, then he can do very, in, with a very short ceremony, with a very short ceremony. So there is different way, again. And sometimes I emphasize those quite, probably you might have been mindful and aware by now, you know, why I emphasize so much because I see, especially in the West, people being very, fixed and rigid. And here I'm trying to say there are so many different ways of doing it. You know, it's all according to our time, our ability and, and all of that. If you have more time and when you, you have more energy, you, there's an extensive way of doing it. When you have less time, you can do more shorter practice. And when you are even less time, you can still do that practice, 
but very in a very short way, you know. So, and that is the same with all different practices, you know. We, we, we shouldn't have to be overwhelmed, you know. Don't try to be overwhelmed, you know, because we can be flexible. One can be very flexible according to the time, according to our energy, according to our capacity, ability. Uh, and it's, it is it's good to know that. It is good to be aware of that and not put pressure on yourself uh, and uh, be harsh on yourself. Um, and not only be harsh on yourself, also um, make others uncomfortable because uh, you know, sometimes oh, we feel oh, this is the only way and then when someone does slightly different, then we think they are making mistake. And they might be not, they might not be making mistake. It is a different, there's different way of doing, different lineage, different traditions. Um, and then the other might feel uncomfortable, you know. Um, so, so anyway, so that is, that is, that is according to the um, where there is when you are able to find the teacher who can give you that was about okay according to that and that is the best if you can do that so here the other options you know again you know um, again even here then again you will find you know, flexibility, not so rigid, you know, here, so again, in case after searching for someone like this, after searching for someone like such, you know, qualified, authentic, good teachers who can give you vows, but if you are unable to find such a spiritual teachers, if you are unable to find such a qualified, you know, authentic teachers, still, it doesn't mean you cannot take a vows of vows. Even in those cases, you, you can take both of vows. There's a way to take both of vows when you cannot find such teachers, even after searching and doing that. And for that, I shall explain another ritual, you know, another ritual ceremony to take the both of vows with which to properly take the vows to, to be able to take proper and unmistaken vows, but without the teachers, because you cannot find such teachers. So here he is going to explain that. Hmm. Hmm. And so here also one thing I, I, I want to kind of make little kind of, um, So he is talking about the particular vows. But also it is, I think, same with whether it's a, you know, oral transmissions, whether it's a refuge, whether it is a, um, some of the empowerments, you know, you really actually search for such teachers who can give in person and you really cannot find it then through rely on online, maybe you might be able to receive it. But even when there is an option that you can in person receive it and because we don't want to make effort, you know, and then we just want to make everything easy. In that cases, you will not receive it because you are just trying to be lazy and easy, you know. Here, because you have really tried hard to find such teacher, but you are unable to find it. Even the Buddha's time, there are time in terms of um, full ordinations. You know, normally to take a full ordination, you need, a, you know, the Sangha or full ordained monks in terms of the nun, the nuns, 
full ordained nuns, you know, there's just, there are certain number, at least 10. Um, 10 to six is kind of minimum kind of number you need for that ceremony. But there are cases when someone is coming from long distance and then they have obstacles and they cannot make it. And for that, the Buddha give exceptions and he does from distant, you know? And so those are the exceptional. And uh, even with, uh, even with the initiation, I think the, op, the if my observations throughout what, you know, 30, 40 years, the first time His Holiness make a exceptions. Before that, I've never seen him making exceptions. But first time he made exception was, if I remember, um, during one of the Kala Chakra, I think it was, an, I think it might have been 2006 or something in Amarwadi. And that year, there were so many Tibetans who were coming from Tibet to receive that. You know, some of them have got a visa. They were all living in India and Nepal to go there. Some of them were processed. Then I think the Chinese government knew that they were going for Skala Chakra. Then they stopped giving visas. Not only they stopped giving visa, they asked everyone who has already been out come home. Otherwise, they will lose their job. Their family can be. Uh, their, their family can be executed or punished. So everyone, even those who have already been outside of the Tibet, they had to go back. You know, they make so much, it's not easy for them to get. Most of them wouldn't get a passport. Most of them wouldn't get a visa to leave the countries. But with a lot of effort, connections, and that some people are able to get it, and they make so much effort to come and they are unable to receive it because the government says, you have to come back. If you are not going to come back, you will be punished or your family will be punished. And that year, His Holiness made an exception. Then he said, you know, I know you have put so much effort, you have so much devotion, so much faith in me, believe in me, and you have put so much effort and went through so much hardship, but still you couldn't. So for those, he says, you know, you can join from there, from distant. You can join from distant and I will keep you in my mandala when I do the, uh, all the practice. I will keep you all in my mandala, include you in my mandala. And from this time, because you, you, have, you have no other options. So then, um, so that was one, what I noticed, or that was the first exception he's holding at mass that one can receive from this time through online, for example, in, through life online, and like that. And similarly, this is similar like here, you know, that, but nowadays, you know, we just try to make it so everything easy. I don't want to make effort to go somewhere else. I just want to receive from my room. Even when we have the options, even when we have the resource options, if I just make effort, I could just fly and go somewhere and receive it. That is not the case for those Tibetans. Those are not cares for the Tibetan. As much as they are desperate to receive it, um, but situations is such that they are unable to do that, you know. And so that is when he makes us exceptions. And um, before that, I never saw him making any exceptions. And so, so. And that kind of exception, as I mentioned, it's been ordination in Buddha's time, Buddha made that exceptions. And so here also that, that this is also exception. You really try your very hard to find such teacher, but you cannot find it. And then there is the exceptions uh, of doing that. Um, and so, mm, so that's where um, with 
Outmost, okay. Hm. So with utmost clarity, I shall write how long ago when he was Amber Raza. So, so here, this one, this exception, here, here the author, Adisha, he's saying that he's not making of himself. He's saying in, in, it comes from the sutra, okay? It comes from the sutras and in a long time ago, the Bodhisattvas, Menjushiri, you know, uh, when he was, long time ago, when Bodhisattva Menjushiri, when he was born as this particular king, Amba Raza, Raza is the king. Uh, at that time, his name was Amba Raza or the Amba king, you know, Amba king. So when he was born as a king, as a Bodhisattva, but as a king, uh, in one of the Manjushiri earlier, previous life, you know, then that king, Amba Raza, or the king Amba, um, generated a Bodhisattva mind, a strong Bodhisattva mind, you know. Mm. Bodhisattva mind, and after generating a, a strong Bodhisattva mind, you know, then, um, out of that strong Bodhisattva mind, and you no, know, then he took a both of vows from the, you know, from the from the holy fields of Buddha and Bodhisattvas, you know, um, from the holy Buddha and Bodhisattvas, because again at that time he couldn't find he couldn't find such such teacher from whom he can receive. He couldn't even he try to find, but he couldn't find a teacher from who can receive that. And having generated both strong bodhisattva mind, then he took the vows. And that that one is as described in this particular sutra, name of the sutra, the ornament of Manjushiri's Buddha field sutra. So in that sutra, there is a description of Manjushiri in earlier his life as a Bodhisattva, when he was as an Emba Raza, that is how he took the Bodhisattva's vows in that circum in such circumstances. So that is giving the example. So following that example, then also when we cannot find, then also we can also receive that way. Mm -hmm. So when we receive it, when we try to take it, then, you know, um, as I mentioned, there are many, many different, um, what do you call, um, ceremony in terms of the long, short, middle, short, you know, that, and here, you know, um, whichever you follow, even when you follow, this particular without teacher also, also you know, uh, first you need to have preparation such as generating, uh, you know, um, going to refuge and generating both the mind, you know, and then, you know, short, long, you know, depending on your time, and then you can, um, you know, if possible, for immeasurable practice, settling practice, you know, and then, uh, you can kind of make three prostrations and then you can, you know, if possible, if your body allow, uh, kneel, kneel down, you know, and then hold, folding your hand together, then you visualize all the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas in, in front of you, you know, um, as a witness and from whom you are receiving that, you act, you visualize, you feel present of the, all the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas and from there, then you try to take it. And you can think you are repeating after the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas three times. You know, they are reciting and you are repeating after them. So in the present of protectors, so that is where, in the present of the protectors, the Buddha fields, with all the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas that you have visualized. 
I generated the mind of perfect enlightenment, you know. So you try to generate a strong bodhicitta mind. You know, the, the reason to take that vow is, you know, to benefit all sentient beings, to be the greatest benefit to all sentient beings. In order to be the greatest sentient being, help and benefit sentient beings, that I need to be fully awakened, fully enlightened. In order to be fully awakened, fully enlightened, I need to engage on both sides of the path, the practice of six perfection and so forth. And for that purpose, then I'm going to take the vows. So, so then you try to generate that much in the mind. You know, and then in, in your mind, you know, um, you invite all sentient beings as my guests. You know, the purpose to invite your guests is to serve them. You know, when you invite your guests, you invite your guests so that you want to serve them. You want to um, offer them something. And same, we 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 invite all the guests to be service to them, to be benefit to them, to be uh, help to them, you know. And thus I shall liberate from samsara. And then, you know, like in some, some ceremony, you know, there is um, those who have not been delivered, I will deliver. Those who have not been liberated, I will liberate. Those who have not been um, unable to breathe, I will lead them to breath. Those who have not gone beyond the uh, sorrow, uh, lead them to beyond the sorrow. So those four lines that you see, you can recite that, you know, so uh, that one verses of doing that, that's one verses, you can use that. And so those not deliver, will deliver, means those who are not being delivered from the, you know, the, the truth of suffering, you know, that I will deliver from the suffering. Not liberated from, or liberate them, and those who are not being liberated from the, the cause of the suffering, you know, the contaminated karma and the delusions, I will liberate them from all the cause of the suffering, and the origin of the suffering, the, the karma and the delusions, you know. Um, those unable to bread, I will lead them to bread, you know, means those who are not being able to, you know, actualize the path within their, uh, the bread of path within their mind that I will help them to actualize the path um, within their mind, you know, and those who have not gone beyond sorrow, I will, so those who have not been liberated from the samsara and have not achieved the fully enlightenment, and I will lead them to fully enlightenment beyond the sorrow states. And so, so while you want to recite that, you know, and then one can think that way, you know, that is a purpose that we take the vows, and you can visualize, you know, repeating three times, and the third time when you repeat, then you can think. Imagine, visualize that you receive the vows. And so that is, um, you receive the vows. You, know, you receive the vows. And that's very important to really feel that you really receive the vows. You really actually receive the vows. So that is one important factor. Well, so that is, uh, you know, um, yeah. So that is generating the the the, the both um, after generating both the mind then uh, taking the both vows. This is up from the Buddha field when you cannot find the teachers from who you can receive, even when you have tried very hard to do that. Okay, so that is one. Hmm. And then you know. Um, So then next one is how to keep the vows. Once we have taken the, the engaging both the vows, 
then how to keep the vows, you know, how to practice the, the moral discipline of the bodhisattvas, you know, to keep the vows. And so then in terms of that, you know, there is uh, the practice of keeping the vows from misdeed, the practice of keeping the vows by engaging the, um, the well-being of sentient beings, you know, and there is the keeping the vows to increase and improve the virtues, you know. And so first, in terms of engaging the practice of the discipline of um, keeping the vows, both sort of the vows, you know, from the misdeed. So that is the first one, you know, how we... So from this moment, okay, from this moment, that one take the vows, you know, from this very moment that one take the vows until achieve supreme enlightenment, you know, until one achieve supreme enlightenment, fully awakened state. So one of the things different between the seven type of the individual liberation vows we spoke about and the both of the vows, the individual liberation vows are only for a lifetime. Even when we take, there is a way, you will repeat, as long as I live, there is the, the, the word, that's as long as I live. So that is lifetime, one lifetime vows. The both of the vows, when you take it, then we take it from now until achieve enlightenment. And so therefore, the both of the vows is not just one lifetime, the vows for, but until we achieve enlightenment, you know? And so, so that is one difference uh, in terms of the time, you know? Um, the other vows are one lifetime, you know, durations. Uh, the both said was not just one lifetime, but life after life until they achieve enlightenment. And so therefore, according to some of the masters, you know, it's better to take the vows because we don't know whether we have taken in the past. We might have taken in the past. We are not aware because we are taking those vows for a lifetime and it's still there, but and so not knowing we have taken it and therefore we are not keeping it, you know? And so, so therefore, you know, um, and still we might be breaking it, you know, without knowing that we are taking it. Um, so that is, that is one thing. So anyway, um, so, so therefore, you know, I think um, to retake it, even we have taken the past, retake it, that is one of the, the beauty of the both of the vows is that you can, you can renew it, retake it again and again. You know, it's like everything's, it's like a child who's learning to walk, falls and get up, falls, get up, falls and get up and slowly, slowly started to fall less and less. And slowly, slowly, he can walk, he or she can walk, the boy or child, uh, girl can walk without falling anymore. And that is same with our practice, same with the both set of vows. You know, at the very beginning, we, we break many times, you know, we try to purify them, we try to renew them, retake them, you know, and then slowly, slowly, as we become more mindful, more aware, more cautious, and then slowly, slowly, we break less and less. And therefore, we have to take less, then there's less of less renewing, less and less retaking. And slowly, slowly, maybe we don't break at all. And then we don't have to retake, we don't have to renew at all. But at the very beginning, it's very natural for ordinary sentient beings, even when you make a commitment with the best intentions, because of strong delusions, unenlightened mind, you know, we are unable to keep those commitments. And then again, we re make, re take the commitments. And that's how we increase and how we improve and get better. 
So from this until I achieve enlightenment, I shall have no thought of harms, you know. Mm. Mm. So out of anger, you know, being angry, you know, then um, the thought to harm, the ill will feeling, you know, ill will feeling, the thought to harm, you know, so not, not to have that kind of harmful thoughts, ill will feelings. And, you know, we also try not to have anger, you know, you know from now, you know, anger. Mm. The disturbed mind, you know, our mind being very disturbed due to someone's actions, attitude, behavior, or whatever, you know. So, um, not to have that feeling of anger where our mind is so disturbed by that towards that person. You know, and avarice, you know, um, miserliness, you know, where we feel, you know, unable, where we feel so miserliness, miser, miserliness that we are unable to share and give to others. Even when we have more than enough to share, more than enough to give, you know. The fear of giving, the fear of sharing, you know. The fear of sharing and giving, you know, because we have so much strong, strong clinging and grasping to the object, clinging and grasping to the object. So we are unable to give, unable to share. And so that kind of mind, you know, um, because when we have that kind of we, we will not be able to help others even when even when we want to help others we are, even when we want to help we are unable to help due to that kind of mind that mind kind of tied us from being helpful and beneficial to others even when we have the capacity the resource ability to help you know, so all, all jealousy, you know, <clears throat> jealousy is the mind when we are, we become miserable when we see the success of others, happiness of others. Instead of being happy to see happiness of others, success of others, virtues of others, this jealousy mind make our make our mind unhappy, miserable, to see success of someone, happiness of someone, um, virtue of someone, you know. And so again, that mind also is obstacles. So the, all this mind, the harmful mind, anger mind, you know, avarice or miserable mind, and jealousy mind, they all hold back us from being help and benefit to others and to practice the bolsas of cat. To be benefit, help to others, which is the practice of bodhisattva. You know, those minds become obstacles to that practice. Those minds become, you know, hindrance to that practice. Um, and those practice create off obstacles to cultivate true love, compassion, both the mind towards all sentient beings. You know? mm -hmm. If we have those mind, then it is hard to have true love, compassion, both the mind towards all sentient beings. Because if we have true love, compassion, both the mind to all sentient beings, then you know we will not be we will not be Miserable or unhappy when we see the happiness of, of another sentient beings or success of another sentient beings. You know, um, if we have true love and compassion and both you the mind towards the sentient beings, we wouldn't feel so 
you know, no, stingy to, to help them when we have the resource and ability to help them, you know. We will be more than happy to help them. We wouldn't have that stingy mind. Instead, we will have this giving mind that, you know, you want to share, you want to give when you have such a love and compassion. And also when you have such love and compassion, then of course you will not be, you will not have some true angry mind and harmful thought to them. So those minds are obstacles to have loving kindness, compassion, go to the mind and to be helped and benefit to others. Therefore, obstacles to practice the devotion of the path. And so therefore we make effort, we make a, every day, every day, when you get morning, you know, we make those kind of strong determination, resolve, resolution, you know, to, throughout day, you know, throughout life, months, years, years, months, week, this 24 hour, I will make, I will, I will be mindful and I will be very more effort not to be under the influence of those negative thoughts of mind or emotions, you know. So we try to, every day we try to do that. And slowly, slowly, you know, doesn't mean just because this morning we met, you know, I will not have an angry mind, humble thought, you know, jealousy mind, all of that. Doesn't mean that they will not arise, you know. Even despite that, but if we make those, those kind of strong mind every day like that, we will be more aware throughout the day, more mindful throughout the day. If you are more mindful and aware throughout the day, you know, they will arise less. And if they do arise, you will be aware of them. And then you can kind of apply whatever practice, meditation to kind of let them go and to eliminate, to, you know, um, in or to deal with them in a positive way, in a healthy way, you know, whatever, through whatever different meditation technique, you know. So that it doesn't bother you, it doesn't disturb you, hurt you, harm you or others for long times, you know, um, for long durations. So that also, you know, from now, this moment until I achieve enlightenment, I shall cultivate pure contact, you know. Mm. So, you know, pure contact, you know, through body, speech and mind, you know, that avoid hurting and harming others in oneself, the contact of the actions of that create more harm, suffering, pain to either others in oneself, you know. Uh, so living in that kind of pure contact, uh, the contact that is not harmful, that is not hurtful to any sentient beings, including yourself. Instead, the contact that help and benefit others in oneself, you know. Mm. And abandon sins, you know, abandon all the negative um, actions, negative thoughts, you know, so. Mm. So trying to apply as much as possible to abandon any and um, any kind of negative action to the body, speech, and mind. That are harmful to sentient beings. And the sentient beings can be others or yourself or both. You know, any sentient beings harming you is harming a sentient beings. Are we clear? When we think normally, Harming sentient beings, we only think of others, isn't it? Harming you is harming sentient beings, you are sentient beings. So when we make 
commitment not to harm any sentient being. That means we are also making commitment not to harm ourselves. When we make commitment to help and benefit sentient beings, we are also making commitment and um, to help and benefit not only others, yourself as well. When we make a commitment to be more kind, compassion to sentient beings, we are not only saying other sentient beings, just also you yourself to be more compassion, more kind to yourself. So you, we cannot, we cannot kind of exclude ourselves from this, um, when we say all sentient beings, you are included in that. And you should include that in that, you know. Um, so, mm. so the, because I was talking about abandoning the, uh, the negative um, actions and negative thoughts and, and craving, you know, and then again, you know, um, craving is one of the source of our miserable, unhappy mind, dissatisfied mind, you know, craving make us unhappy, dissatisfied and miserable. And when you are more miserable, unhappy, we tend to be, we tend to act more into more actions that brings hurtful and harm to others. You know, so the craving is the cause of suffering and pain and hurt to others in oneself. You know? And it's the craving that gives rise to jealousy, that gives rise to miserliness, greediness. And in many times that give rise to anger and hateful feelings and harmful feelings. So craving is you know, one of the very strong um, negative emotion. That is the root of a lot of other negative emotions and suffering and the pain. And so again, um, we try as much as we can to reduce the craving, you know, instead trying to find sense of containment, you know. The antidote to a craving is feeling content, having the contentment. And when we have this content mind, contentment, then, you know, we can find peace and happiness, satisfactions, you know, all the time, anywhere, you know. Hmm. So that has to come from within, not from outside. Contentment, content mind, contentment, satisfied mind is something that we need to develop from within. We cannot find that from external objects. Cannot. Hmm. The external object can never lead to content mind or content or satisfied mind. It can never, it has to be found from within. You know, um, and so, um, and with joy for the vows of discipline, you know, and then trying to generate uh, joyfulness in keeping the vows, uh, in practicing the, the dis moral discipline of the both of us, you know. So, finding that joyful in your practice is important. Finding a joyfulness, any kind of meditation, any kind of practice is very important. And but here, specifically at the moment, we are talking about this particular um, practice, you know, mm. this particular practice of 
maintaining the moral discipline of the Bodhisattva, or in other words, keeping the vows or precepts of the Bodhisattva and finding joy in that. The more joy you find, you know, the more easier it is to practice. The less joyful it is, the more harder it is to practice. You know, the more less the less joyful you feel about your practice meditations, the more difficult it is, the more harder it is, you know, to practice. You have to push yourself. You know, it's not easy. You know, pushing. You know, stressful. You know, all of that. But when you enjoy it, you don't have to push it. You know, you don't have to push it. You know, and it becomes much more easy to practice, joyful, easy, and then your practice will be better. You have better result. You are, you have better result. Mm. I shall train to emulate the Buddhas, you know, and then, you know, making that commitment, I will try to follow the Buddha's path, you know, try to follow the way, act the way they act, you know, you know, so whatever is the best for the benefit of all sentient beings, I will try to act by uh, emulating as the Buddhas, you know, so, you know, when you are in a certain dilemma, you know, how would Buddha react to that? How, how would Buddha react to that? What would Buddha say to that? How would Buddha think about that? And we think, you know, and then that is how Buddha will respond. That is how Buddha will react. That is, that is how Buddha, and then we try to follow that, you know, emulate that, you know. Um, and so, um, so once we take those, we generate the bodhicitta mind, and once we take um, the bodhicitta vows, you know, you know, then we become known as the child of the Buddhas. You know, child of the Buddhas. We become the family of the Buddhas. You know, as the bodhisattvas or sometimes child of the Buddhas. And so our actions can bring a, you know, fame to the Buddhas, or our action can be, you know, become, um, bring a bad name to the Buddhas. And so we don't want to bring bad name to the Buddhas. You know, we don't want to bring bad name to the Buddhas. You know, um, and so, um, we try to try our best, you know, um, not to bring bad name for the Buddhas. Of course, from Buddha side, they don't mind, you know. But from our side, we don't want to do that, you know. And so that is mm -hmm. so. Okay, so I think maybe uh, today we will kind of stop here. Um, so any questions, any questions from today? Yes, Keshila. Yes, please. Are you our teacher? Can you give us the vows? Um, well, you know, um, of course, um, I've been asked and requested, you know, um, uh, whether I'm qualified or not, I don't know. You have to, uh, <laughs> individually, everyone has to make their own um, decisions, um, but Definitely, I have been uh, requested by some some students, and we have offered the 
the ceremony in the past and we haven't offered it for last three years, I guess, after the pandemic. Um, even though there have been some requests, um, I'm really, really reluctant to do on online, you know. Um, His Holiness is in different categories, you know. Um, and also, you know, he cannot travel anymore like he used to. So, and there are so many students all over the world who are desperate to receive from him. And so, so from him, there is an exception, but um, I personally um, doesn't feel so much comfortable myself to do online. So I haven't done that, even though I have been asked quite a few times over the year if they can do by own. Um, so once we open here, I think uh, we'll do that. Um, but of course, some individuals, uh, if it is in their in different situation, then that might be one different things, I think, um, you know. Uh, but yeah, so we, 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 we are, we are, the sender is planning to have that one of those um, before I leave, I think during the retreat or, or yeah, somewhere there, yeah, in one of the sessions. Any questions? Geshela? Yes, please. Um, can you speak a little bit more about purifying after you've broken a bodhisattva vow? You know, just can you talk about that a little bit more? Yeah. Mm. One is like like any purifications. Uh, you know, when we notice, when we notice and when we are mindful and when we're aware that we might have broken one of those supposed sort of vows, you know, or any, if we have noticed, we have engaged in any of the negative karma or negative actions, you know, or broken any kind of, you know, refuge vow, lay vow, both sort of vows, you know, we try to do purification and there are many forms of purifications, you know. And we try to apply any of those purification, whatever one feel more connected with that particular practice, you know, and uh, whatever practice you do, purification, you know, they're applying the poor opening power and through the poor opening power, whether you do the practice of both of about purification, whether you do the practice of um, 35 Buddha practice, you know, or whether you do as a purification, you know, um, you recite certain sutras or whether as a purification out of this open and power, whether you do meditation on emptiness or whether you do as part of, um, you know, make a offering to the holy objects, three jewels, or whether you part of purification, whether you, uh, you know, create some holy objects uh, or contribute to a holy objects, such as creation of, uh, you know, um, statues, stupas, um, monasteries, nunneries, centers, or you know, publication of the you know, I know, uh, books, Dharma books, and so forth. You know, so there are many. Um, so you can do any of those actions, whichever you feel um, more connected. Yeah, because there are many different purification practices. But whichever you choose, for open and power. You try to bring those all four open the power as much as possible. And then also you can try to retake it, you know, and renew it, you know, and you can try to retake and renew it. Um, again, of course, if there's teachers, it's best to take from the teachers. You know, if you cannot find the teachers, then you can take from the, uh, your holy objects from your altar, you know, visualize. You know, all the Buddhas, both sattvas, and then you can take from them, and so you can renew, retake it. So, so one can do that. So I think that is that is one of the good for the both of vows, for tantric vows and others. You cannot take retake by yourself. You know, whether it's tantric vows or whether it's um, 
the labels, the refuge blocks, you know, you have to. In tandem about there is, uh, you can do a self-initiation for, for that. You need many other practice before that um, to be able to do that self-initiation. And so to renew the, the vows, either you have to retake the, retake the, the initiations or you have to do the self-initiation and you can't just do self-initiation, you to do self you have to do certain retreat and fire puja and all that and the requirement to be able to do that. But the both sort of vows, you can renew yourself um, by yourself, even if you cannot find the teachers, you know. So so I think that that is a little bit kind of a little bit more easier to renew it in that sense compared to other vows. Okay. Yes, Sheila, I have yes, one question um, in chat. Um, yes. Lorna, it says, do you mean once the center is open, you would offer to give the vows online? Uh, yeah, I guess probably we can do that, you know. Um, we can do that too, and, um, yeah, but I think Definitely at the moment, but in the future, when you do get a, who you was taking on online now, but whenever in the future, when you does get an opportunity, when you can find a qualified teachers, then also you try to take in person in the future as well. That will be my advice. But in the present situation where you, you don't have access to that, you know, someone does not have access to, um, a teachers called by a teacher or teacher who can give that, then maybe probably one can take from um, online. And but definitely, uh, if you get any opportunity in the future to be able to take them in person, then I will encourage you to do that. And if even someone at, at the moment we take online, okay? Yeah. Okay. Then we will do the dedication. Okay. If you have more questions, please bring next time. Okay. Due to the merit of this virtuous action, may I quickly attain a state of Guru Buddha and lead all living beings without exception into that enlightened state. May the Supreme Jewel Bodhisattva, that is not arising, arising grow. And may that which has arisen not diminish but increase more and more. To to chan shin jang gun jave, zin jang pewe pung so to goze, cho sum kurwe le mo to to, pa da so do che gun to shan Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you, thank you for joining. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you. 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 Thank you.